so excited. I am Jelana Walker Herman, and I'm here with Faith Consulate Life Application Class. We're excited because we are on a new platform. We are on our online church platform, so we want to welcome everyone. Hello. We have um, Facebook, YouTube. We welcome you as well. So we have moderators out there. We're still engaging with questions. If you have those burning questions, we want to hear them. They will still be addressed. So if you're on YouTube, we have Sister Lisa. So look out for Sister Lisa. She will be interacting with you. If you are on Facebook, we have Sister Tori that will be interacting with you. And here on the online church platform, we have Brittany. So I'm pretty sure I see that the online church platform is like booming right now. And so um, <laughs> and so we just, you know, Brittany is there to welcome you. If you're needing prayer during life application, before, after, during service, we welcome that as well. Click on that prayer request button. And then we make sure that um, Sister Rhonda will be praying with you today. And so um, Lady Joy, are you, can you hear me? Are you ready to come on? And again, those questions will be addressed. So make sure that you do so. If you are on YouTube and life application, YouTube and Facebook, then you can, um, if you are look, looking for prayer, just say, I'm looking for prayer. And then we'll send you over into our online church community and we will be praying for you there as well. All right. So we're going to get started. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning, everybody. Hope that all is well this morning, that you're enjoying this new experience. Hallelujah. Amen. And I hope that you are excited and got pumped up. We said, um, we were uh, we just sang the blessing of Abra Abraham. Amen. We come today to learn how to get what? Our inheritance. Amen. We want to get our inheritance in everything, in everything that we, we do. Now, that song is a perfect segue for what we're going to be talking about this morning. So we just finished our, our session on prayer. We've been talking about prayer all year long. So hopefully your prayers are more effective, okay? Are a lot more effective because you're learning to do two things. One, pray in the Holy Ghost, and two, pray word-based prayers, okay? Pray in the Holy Ghost and pray word-based prayers. Now, I was thinking about going into another session where we started talking about just our words and what we say. And then I was asked by our wonderful e-church host, uh, Miss Jelana Herman, to kind of switch gears and uh, talk about purpose, right? And so I asked the pastor, I said, well, she asked me to talk about purpose. And uh, what do you think? He said, sure, fine. So we are getting ready to go into this whole thing on purpose. Now, some of you who've been a while, around for a while, Faith Counselor, you've heard me teach on purpose before. But this is going to be a little different. God gave me some new stuff, okay? I haven't taught purpose in about three years, I believe, at least three years. Um, so I'm going to teach purpose, some of the things you have heard before, um, but some of the things that I'm going to be saying, you're going to get, get more revelation and more insight. You know, as we go on in life, we grow. And uh, as we grow in the word, God helps us to understand what he's already taught us, even with more depth and more revelation. So that's what's going to happen here today. Okay, so don't say, oh, God, I've heard her talk about purpose before. It's the same thing. It is not. God always gives us more revelation. We go from faith to faith, glory to glory. Amen. So even, Ms. Jelana, what you, what I said before, before that you wanted to hear, you're going to get that, but you're going to get a little bit of something else as well. So as usual, even though we're on this new platform, what I want you to do is type your questions in the chat. Nothing changes for you, just the platform. You type your, um, your questions in the chat. Our hosts are going to relay them back to me, and we're going to have this wonderful dialogue. As usual, you're going to see the, um, the, the PowerPoint, right? Okay, the PowerPoint is going to be even better now. So you're going to get to see, see um, the speakers talk, which will be me this morning, and the PowerPoint at the same time. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. We're talking about purpose, okay? And so this first thing that we're doing is an introduction to purpose, all right? It's just an introduction. Um, so today, um, this is probably gonna take us at least a month to get through this, maybe a month and a half. Um, and I'm gonna take my time, okay, as we talk about it. 
going to really take my time, going to really press it in your spirit because you need to be able to birth your purpose into the earth. And how are you going to do it? You're going to do it through prayer, what we just finished talking about. You're going to pray in the Holy Ghost, and he's going to give you revelation about your purpose, and then you're going to speak word-based prayers that are associated with your purpose, and this thing is going to birth, and it's going to manifest in the, um, in the earth so that you can get your what? Inheritance. Amen? All right, so let's get started. Our first thing, what is purpose? Purpose, the definition I'm giving you today that we're going to focus on is purpose is the reason for which you were created. It is the reason for which you were created. It is the reason why you exist. It's the reason for which you were created. It is the reason why you exist. Again, it is the reason for which you were created. It is the reason why you, ex you exist. I said that three times because I got to press that into your, your, your uh, spirit. Why do you exist? Your purpose is why you exist. It's why you exist. It's why you exist. So you got to know it. You can't just be walking around on this earth just doing any and everything. Hallelujah. Okay? So based on the definition of purpose, your purpose is determined by the creator, God. Now, let's go back. This is something I've, I've said before when I've talked about purpose. You do not get to determine your purpose. You don't determine your purpose. God determines your purpose. The creator determines the purpose. The creator. If I make something, the thing that I make doesn't tell me why it exists. Okay? The thing I make doesn't tell me why it exists. I tell it why it exists. You don't get to tell God why he created you. God tells you why he created you. So that's the first thing that we err in our society. We think that we get to determine our purpose. We don't determine our purpose. The creator, the thing that makes something, determines it, determines its impact determines why it's here, determines what it's supposed to be doing. The creator determines it, not the creation, okay? So, a statement by Rick Warren. You may choose your career, your spouse, your hobbies, and many other parts of your life, but you don't get to choose your purpose. Let me say it again. You may choose your career, your spouse, your hobbies, and many other parts of your life, but you don't get to choose your purpose. And that's just it. Sometimes we walk around and we don't do what we uh, need to be doing because, uh, uh, and we don't feel fulfilled or things are not in sync, things are not going the way they should go. Why? Because we are the ones that have made that determination. And we should. God makes that determination. God is the one who determines why we exist. God is the one that determines why we live. Amen? So why are we studying purpose? Why study purpose? Okay, going to give you uh, five reasons for studying purpose. When you study purpose, you um, so that you know your purpose gives meaning, knowing your purpose, I'm sorry, gives meaning to your life. Knowing your purpose gives meaning to your life. So some of you all around here just living uh, kind of depressed. Why? Because, you, have, because uh, you don't feel like your life has any meaning. You don't have anything to do. You have no destiny. No where you, you, know, you don't know where you're going. You're just existing from day to day. So you treat your life, your body, the people around you any kind of way. Why? Because your life has no meaning. But well, why does your life not have meaning? Because you don't know your purpose. Next thing, knowing your purpose simplifies your life. I love this part. The fact that knowing your purpose simplifies your life. Why? You may say, why would knowing my purpose simplify my life? Because what happens is when you have decisions to make, your decision making becomes easier because you make your decisions based on your purpose. So, when you decide whether you're going somewhere or not, how do you decide where you're going? Does it fit my purpose? If it doesn't fit my purpose, I don't care how many invitations I get, the answer is still what? No. 
It simplifies your life. What job should I take? Well, let's make sure that our job is going to help accentuate our purpose. If it is not our purpose, the least thing it should do is accent it, add to it, push us towards it. So when you're moving from one job to another, you can accentuate your what? Purpose. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Knowing your purpose focuses your life. Focus. Laser focus. Know where I'm going, know where I'm, what I'm doing, know when I'm supposed to do it. Okay? Focus. Knowing your purpose motivates your life. You know, you ever have a hard time getting up out of bed? Okay? When people are depressed, they don't want to get up. Okay? Depression a lot exists because they don't know who they are. Okay? Absolutely. Because there's, they don't know their purpose. So it's hard to get up in the morning. When you know what it is you're supposed to be doing, even when you feel bad, there's a uh that makes you get up. It motivates you. I was tired this morning, y'all. Tired. Because <laughs> I went to bed and woke up and had to wake up to finish this. Uh, the, uh, well, God was, was talking a little bit last night, and that's when he said, you're going to go a little bit of a different way with purpose. And then I woke up about 1 this morning and had to work on this. And I actually sent this PowerPoint to, to Lamar about 4 a.m. It was a little after 4, and then I went and got in the bed. But I'm up, and I'm bouncing around. Why? Because I'm motivated. Why am I motivated? Because I am in purpose. Purpose motivates your life, and it makes you get going, even when the body may be a little tired. Knowing your purpose prepares you for eternity. Isn't that awesome? Prepares you for eternity. I want to get a well done. How am I going to get my will done? I'm going to get my will done because I'm going to do everything that God created me to do. Amen. Everything that he created me to do. All right, so let's get started. Let's, so Genesis, the first chapter, verse 26. And it says, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Now, what is so uh, just profound about this? We, we're really gonna dig into this because this is where God really started dealing with me and we have a little bit of a different take on what we've talked about with purpose before. But first I want you to see, see that picture that was in the background of the slide, okay? And you see a person looking in a mirror, a reflection. God said, let us make man in our image. So when that man is looking through the mirror, is into the mirror and seeing what he perceives as, as himself in the reflection, guess who that is? That's God. Ain't that powerful? Oh, that is so powerful. That's powerful. When you look at yourself in the mirror, who is on the other side? That's God. Woo! That's what I was up at 1 o'clock this morning getting into some powerful stuff. <laughs> Hallelujah. God said, let us make man in our image. On the other side, the reflection, that image is God. I'm going to prove it to you. That's God. Hallelujah. 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 Now, Go to the next slide so we can really put this together because I'm going to come back. I'm not going to leave you hanging. In order to get your purpose right, 
you must first get your image right. Now, look at this picture up here. You got this cat looking in a mirror and hit the reflection that he sees. He sees a what? Lion. All I'm saying is when you look at yourself in the mirror, do you see what God sees? Do you see God? This cat is looking into the mirror and he's seeing himself properly. He doesn't see himself as this small cat. He sees himself as this lion. When you look in the mirror, do you see a, a, a human being or do you see God? That's all I, do you see a human being, fallen man, or do you see God? When you look in the mirror, you should see God. You should see God. Once you see God, and when you look in the mirror, it's at that point that you'll be able to get your purpose right. I, I, so many people say to me, I, how, do I, how do I find out my purpose? How do I figure out who I am? What I'm supposed to be doing? And I realize the struggle is you can't figure it out because you don't see God when you look in the mirror. Oh, this is so powerful. Oh, you got to see God. Man, so... You might say, well, what, how, how do I see God? How do I see God? Hallelujah. In Genesis 126, and God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. So God created man in his own image. He tells us in those scriptures, when God said, let us, let us being God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, they're collaborating. They're three in one persons. So they're collaborating. And they're talking about making another entity, another being. And they said, let's make this being just like us. Let's make this being just like us. Okay? And so then verse 20 said, so what did he do? He did it. He created. He created man and laid him just like what? Us. Hallelujah. This is good stuff. All right. Now, when after he created it, in verse two, uh, Genesis 2, verse 7, he says he breathed into his nostrils and man became a living soul. Okay. Hallelujah. Trying to make sure I get my PowerPoints right. Okay. Now, let's go to that slide that says purpose and it has the, uh, the Hebrew words on it. Hallelujah. So, how do we get, get here? Well, when we study this scripture in Genesis, I just want to make sure you're getting it so y'all won't think this is, and I said that, I, I'm sorry. Hold on, let me slow down. I'm sorry, let's back up. I think I'm jumping too fast. I want to go to the one that says purpose. In order to get your purpose right, you must first get your image right. I, I want to go back there because I didn't go through Psalm 139 and 14. I want to walk, I'm going to take my time. Psalm 139 and 14 says, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. We've talked a lot about that. You got to know that when you look in the mirror, that you see God. Okay? And when you understand that you see God, you'll be able to say like the psalmist says, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And then you, you will know it. And, and nobody will be able to move you from it. And because nobody will be able to remove you from it, then what happens? Then you're able to get your purpose. First point, understand, when God created man, he copied himself. So when God created you, he copied himself. Say that with me. When God created me, he copied himself. Say it again. When God created me, when God created me he, copied he copied himself. When God created me, God created me he, copied he copied himself. Now, number, point number two. Man was created with the essence of God himself. Now, this is so powerful. Okay. Now, 
Genesis, uh, let's go back, because this point right here, oh, Genesis 2 and 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. So man was created with the essence of God. What does that mean? When God breathed into man to create, to make that, that dust form into something, he put the essence of himself into this body. So the essence of God, y'all got to see this. I hope it's just not powerful to me. His essence, who he is, is in you. His essence is what was created. God's essence, okay? That body wasn't anything until God's essence went into it. It wasn't anything until his essence went into it. Now, let's go into... Um, Go, go to a couple of slides for it, and I want to show you these, these Hebrew words, okay? Image. You say that teslam, which means image, likeness, or of resemblance. We're not talking about the body. We're talking about the essence. That's the image. Likeness, duma. That means likeness, similar to or in the likeness of or like as. Now, let's go to breathe. Nah, I think it's no fuck, which is to breathe, to blow, to give up or lose life. That was so powerful, to give up or to lose life. Like, I mean, it's like he's loosing his life, his essence into another being. Breath, nish, neshama, neshana. I'm trying to say it right. It's breath or spirit. The breath of God, the breath of man. And then soul, which is nephesh, is the living being. The living being with, the, with life in its blood. It's the breathing substance or being. It's the breathing substance or being. Now look at these pictures. These pictures depict the breath of God going into man. And that's how we become the substance of who we are. The breath of God blowing into man. So when we go back and we look at, go back a couple of slides where you see the purpose and it gives the three points. When you go back and look at that, it says man was created with the essence of God himself. So when you look into the mirror, you should see the essence of God himself because his breath created you. See, God created everything with himself. If you go back to Genesis 1, about verse 3, when he starts creating light, he did not create light with the sun and the moon. He created light with himself. His essence created light. <laughs> Got to go study that scripture. His essence created light. And so God is light. And so when he created us, he created us with his essence. We're light. All right, let's, let's uh, take a minute and see if we, can we get Jelana? Um, Sister Nala, she said, she had a testimony. She said, I have been working on my master's degree and I know that I'm moving in purpose because on Friday around 10 something, I was almost done with my paper. The computer restarted and deleted everything. <laughs> and she said, after I cried a little, laugh out loud, I took a deep breath and redid it. And I was able to submit my paper right before the deadline, before the deadline time. Amen. Amen. So Nala, auto save. Auto save. Okay. And you save several times going into it. And if you're taking classes online, never, ever, ever do your post. Okay. Okay, okay. Well, first of all, they're telling me, Nala, that they told you, you to get a new computer. Now, that's what they said around here. But in addition to that, <laughs> what I want you to do is always do your post, write your post in Word. 
Don't ever write your post in the blackboard. Don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Write them in Word, auto save, copy and paste. Hallelujah, auto save. E amen, amen. All right, anybody else, Jelana? <laughs> I wrote it in my Microsoft Word document and I uploaded it on Google document and I saved it on a, a jump drive. <laughs> So sometimes, you know, especially when you're walking in your purpose and you, because when you're walking in your purpose, you put in, you know, you're, you're, you're spreading the agenda of God out there, right? In the manner of what you're doing. And so who wants to be against you because you're doing that, right? And so you just try to take all, you know, measures and, you know, um, so I just wanted to bring that about writing the book. I'm looking here on some of the comments here. Let's see who else, um, Sister um, Othello, she said, God reveals the greatness inside of you when you see your reflection. And um, actually, she said that was from Brother Vincent. Um, um, Brittany, our moderator out there, our host, I'm sorry, our host for our online chat, I mean, online platform. She said, wow, in order to get your purpose right, you must first get your image right. Amen. And so those are some of the comments that I'm looking here. There's a lot of comments coming through, so. <laughs> but those are some of the comments that I can see so far. Okay, so we're going to keep going. And um, so that's the first thing. I need you to get your image right, okay? You got to get your image right. You can't get to purpose without you getting your image right. So let's go on. Let's keep moving. We're going to go to Genesis, the first chapter, verse 20. I think this is the second chapter, verse 28. Okay, I didn't put the chapter down. So I think it's chapter one, chapter one, verse 28. And God blessed them and said unto them, one, be fruitful, two, multiply, and three, replenish the earth, and four, subdue it, and five, have dominion over the, over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the face of the earth. Now, that is definitely chapter one, Genesis 1, And God said, God blessed them, and God said unto them, be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over everything that moves. So when we start talking about purpose, as we move, once you recognize who you are, that you are the image of God, and for some of you, I need to pause. Some of you, I, we made that statement, you've got to get your image right. You need to meditate on those first scriptures I gave you. Because if, if you don't really, really understand that you are little G-O-D, that you are God-like, that God breathed his essence into you, you can't get to the next step. You can't get to the next step. You got to understand that. Because if you don't understand that, you won't understand Genesis 1 and 28. Genesis 1 and 28, the first thing it says, and God blessed them. God blessed them. What does that mean? He blessed them. God empowered us when he did this. He empowered us. He empowered us to live in our purpose and to live out our purpose. God blessed them. God empowered them to live in their purpose and to live out their purpose. God blessed you. God empowered you to live in your purpose and to live out your purpose. God blessed you. God empowered you to live in your purpose and to live out your purpose. God blessed you. God empowered you to live in your purpose and to live out your purpose. When he did that, whoosh, and he breathed his essence into you, if God created everything with his words, with his essence, and then he blew his essence into you, it was for you to be able to do the same thing. That's why you got to get your image right so that you know that whatever your purpose to do, you can do it and stop shrinking back. 
What good is it to find out what you're supposed to be doing and then you don't have the right image of yourself, the right reflection of yourself to actually go and do it? You see yourself wrong and then you won't go and do it. So understand that the blessing, when God blessed them, the blessing, the ble and that's why one of the reasons why we heard the song this, this morning, okay? The blessing is God's empowerment. It is God's empowerment. It is the creative force of God. His essence is the creative force. That creative force is in you. When God blessed us, he empowered us. Now, what does he empower us to do? Let's go to the second part of that scripture. And of course, the one, two, three, four, and five, that's not in the Bible. That's my emphasis, as our pastor would say. It says, he blessed them, and when he blessed them, he gave them instructions. This is where man's purpose came in. The first purpose being given out. And this is a tall order. It ain't small. Big order, big order. Five points to the purpose of man. One, be fruitful. Two, multiply. Three, replenish the earth. Four, subdue the earth. Five, have dominion. One, be fruitful. Two, multiply. Three, replenish the earth. Four, subdue the earth. Five, have dominion. Again, one, be fruitful. Two, multiply. Three, replenish the earth. Four, subdue the earth. Five, have dominion. That's the overall purpose. Now, once we get that, now, and you understand that's what you've been empowered to do, now you've got to go to God to get the specifics of that. The specifics. And see, what happens is we want to jump to the specifics a lot. <laughs> and we haven't gotten the foundation. But good are the specifics if your foundation is not right. What house have you seen built that wasn't on a solid foundation that stood? The first thing, I'm in the South, in the United States. So here we have two types of foundations. We very seldom see basements where I am. Not to say, I'm not saying we don't have basements, but that they're not uh, something that we have a lot of. Most of these houses around here are built on crawl space, a concrete slab. That's the first thing you're gonna see somebody pour a concrete slab before they put up any walls, or they're gonna build the crawl space, which is uh, like bricks going around. They dig a little in the earth, and then they put the bricks, and it's from there that they put the uh, the subfloors on. Just like with building a house, how can you build yourself when your foundation isn't right? Your foundation, your image, you got to get your image right, and you got to know that you are empowered properly before you can start moving into your purpose. So I really need you to meditate on, on the other items. Look, Psalm 139.15. I have it up in the Amplified in the Message Bible, but at first I'm going to go and read it in the King James. You don't have it on your slide in the King James. I just want to read it in the King James first. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. My substance. We already went through verse 14, which says I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Now, who is, who, what about me that was made? My substance, what about my substance? My substance 
was not hid from thee. Now let's go to the Amplified, which says, my frame was not hidden from you when I was formed in secret and intricately and skillfully formed as if embroidered with many colors in the depths of the earth. Your eyes have seen my unformed sus substance and in your book were all written the days that were appointed for me, when as yet there was not one of them even taking shape. Let's look at the Message Bible. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made, bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something, like an, like an open book. You watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. Now think about this. Because God breathed his essence into each one of us. And look what he thinks about it. Look at these, these descriptions. Intricately, skillfully formed, embroidered with many colors. Think about embroidery. You know, I don't like to embroider because you got to have patience to embroider. You know, all the different threads, different textures, that needle going in and out of stuff. You know, some, some things that are really embroidered and handmade, that stuff is what? Expensive. It's expensive because it takes a lot of time to do it. Why would God use these scriptures to describe, to describe our formation? Take time to, um, take time to appreciate yourself. And we're not talking about appreciating yourself with arrogance, like I'm all that in a bag of chips, but appreciate yourself as God's creation. We're not talking about an arrogance. We're talking about understanding and knowing who we are and operating in it with confidence. Got to meditate on this. I love the Message Bible. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made bit by bit, how I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. Underline that, because you all can take notes in this new app. Write it down in this online platform. The days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. I want you to think about these things. We're going to start wrapping this up. Jeremiah 1 and 5. These are the scriptures from which we're going to um, continue our discussion for the next few weeks on purpose. Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Doesn't that go with just this last verse that we just looked at, Psalm 134? I'm sorry, Psalm 139, verse 16? The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. And then we look at Jeremiah. He talks about before he was formed in the belly. Let's take some time and meditate on these. The Amplified says, before I formed you in the moon, I knew you and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I consecrated you to myself as my own. So go back and you start seeing yourself in the mirror. And you seeing God on the other side. Before I, was sh before I shaped you, this is the message Bible. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. I had holy plans for you. A prophet to the nations. 
That's what I had in mind for you. Then Jeremiah 29 and 11. For I know the thoughts I think towards you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. I know the plans, amplified, I know the plans and thoughts that I have for you, says the Lord. Plans for peace and well-being and not for disaster to give you a future and a hope. The Message Bible. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a future and a hope. All right, that's all I got. Jelana, any questions or comments? Um, platform, but um, I just want the things that you're talking about. I wanted to bring up two points, um, and I know we don't have time right now to bring, you know, to elaborate on it. But maybe something to think about. But I think from our conversation before regarding this topic is that um, two th things. One, you know, you mentioned something about like you see a, a lot in government where if someone has some type of sickness or whatever. The sickness, and we even saw that recently with, you know, um, relating to um, the Black Panther guy. And so with that being said, you know, they, they still kept going. Like you could tell, like, you know, somebody could have got a death sentence, but they still woke up and put the clothes on and went and, and still continue to do what they supposed to bring that agenda, whatever their agenda was to the marketplace. The other thing was, um, Lady Joy, is that when you have that clarity and i think it's one of those things that you have that understanding of um your purpose is that when you have that clarity of um who you are then you will automatically you will start seeing how the church is connected to your purpose and so it's your purpose is not separated from the church and so what does that mean it doesn't you know pastor ben he always talk about um <laughs> that you know a scientist shouldn't be you know all that he does is just be on the usher board. There's nothing wrong with being on the usher board, but you know, a lot of, they know their purpose and they're not fulfilling it. And they think that because they're serving in that capacity, you know, that they're living or doing their purpose, you know, that they're called to do on earth. But I realized that a lot of things that, um, okay, I'm looking at some of the comments, but a lot of things is that if I, Perp, you know, just really assessing ourselves, you know, when we start understanding our purpose, you should start seeing. And if you don't see the connection to the church, then maybe you're at the wrong church. And I'm not saying our church, <laughs> but in general, like whoever's listening to this, because, you know, if your purpose is dealing with something on a global level or whatever the case may be, you know, when you look at our church purpose, our church vision, nine times out of 10, it fits into um, the arena of who people's purpose, individual purposes are. So it kind of, you know, you will see that marriage together. Um, so one of the things I want to say is this. We're going to go to where you were, the comments that you just made. And we're going to go over there kind of systematically over a point in, over the next uh, month, maybe month and a half. But people will never see the, their connection of their purpose to the kingdom of God, to the earth, to this church, to anything else, if they at first don't see who they are. And so, you know, one of the things, um, and, and I don't want anybody to miss this point, because people want, I've, I've taught purpose a couple of times, and I can teach purpose and go through purpose, and then at the end of the day, people will say, well, how do I figure it out? One of the things that used to be in this first lesson that I did was the spiritual gift survey and the multiple intelligence test, and we would dive in and start trying to help people figure out who they are. And, you know, I give people strategies to try to, 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 try to get it, and they still don't get it. And I believe the missing link is because they don't see themselves properly. That's why I, that's why I think, you know, when you, when you suggested this, I thought I was going to start one way, but God had to back us up because we can't keep teaching purpose and diving into what it is that you're doing 
and what it is you should be doing and how it connects in the earth if you don't understand who you truly are. Because you will dumb your purpose down if you get it at all. If you get it at all. You got to understand that the reason why I can look at you and because I've looked at people before and we're going to be, I can take some more questions and we'll be winding this up in a second. But, you know, people will say, you know how we have these plans? We, we have people write their life plans here. They'll bring it to us and we'll say, you can do this without God. <laughs> you can do this as just a, a, a human being not relying on any faith, and we tell you to go back and do it again. And people sometimes are taken aback by that. Why would they write something so simplistic? It's because they didn't see themselves properly to start with. They didn't see themselves the way God saw them. Not even so much the way God saw them, they didn't see themselves as God, that God put his essence in them, therefore he can do what he does. So, the one thing I want you guys to spend some time this week meditating on and looking at yourself in the mirror, just go stand in the bathroom and look at yourself and meditate on these scriptures. Meditate on the scriptures I gave you in Genesis. Meditate on the scriptures I gave you in Psalm till you see God when you look in the mirror. Till you look like that cat looks in the mirror and sees that lion. So I really want us to make the connection because people do get frustrated. You're right, Jelana, about our church. And, but why do they get frustrated with our church and you know, living out purpose and how it's connected and you jumping up with, with purpose and everything in the morning and can't wait to do it. And you, you working at night um, doing things for the church, why? The person who does that sees themselves the way God sees them. And then from there, they start operating in their purpose. You gotta see yourself the way God sees you. Okay, Jelana. No, you're good. This is good. I'm glad we're, you know, we're really talking about this because I don't know about everybody else, but I'm that person. Like, you know how we, you know, we talk about losing weight, right? And, you know, you're thinking that I think I look skinny i'm gonna be honest i really think that i look skinny until i go look in the mirror or no even when i look in the mirror i think i look skinny okay until someone takes a picture and when i see that picture i'm like what in the world like who is that <laughs> so i say all of that is this i'm the type of person when you're talking about that we see ourselves as god because i grew up in church i'm like yes i see myself as god what are you talking about lady joy i know exactly yes but let me tell you, this is how the indicator, these are the indicators that show that I don't really believe what I say I believe, right? <laughs> is that when I start putting limitations on God or, or when I start um, saying, oh, I can't do that because this is happening right now. Well, that's a limitation. Do I? So really, you got to check your language to see if you really believe it. If you're that type of person, I'm, you know, I'm just explaining to you, you know, that I'm not the one that sees when I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh, my gosh. I look fat or I, I'm overweight or whatever the case. I don't see that. <laughs> I'm the one in the mirror that say, no, I see it. But do I believe it? You know what I'm saying? Like, do I believe it? And the way we can tell we really believe it, that we, we are images of God is based off of our language and is based off of our actions. So this is really good, Lady Joy. I'm so glad that we're talking about this because, you know, um, a lot of times, you know, we say, yes, I understand. Yeah, we look like God. Yes, yes. We go to faith constantly. What are you talking about, Lady Joy? But, you know, based off of our words and based off of our actions, it really is a telltale sign of, do we really believe this? <laughs> you know? So um, I have some comments. Let me see. Let me look at the comments here, Lady Joy. Um, let's see here. Motivation. Okay. So Sister Rathelis, um, I see some um, in Rhonda saying amen. True to some of your comments that you were talking earlier, Lady Joy. Sister Bethelis said, our motivational praise song, which is, I know who I am. That, you know, I mean, that tells you right there, you know, as what we believe in, right? And so um, let's see here, looking at some more comments. 
Um, Sister Vanessa said, God's image is not described as being possessed in part or given gradually. It is immediate. Oh, I love that. It is immediate. And so Sister Rathella said, tying with seed and sowing. And so um, Brother Vincent said, these also speak to the abilities of God in which through image, we, we also have an addendum package that comes with it. Um, the likeness of God, the, this, this distinguishes people from all other earthly creation. Oh man, that's Sister Vanessa. She said, the, like, the likeness of God, this distinguishes people from all other earthly creation. Wow. And wow. Let me, let so those me, are the comments that we have um, so far, Lady Joy. Uh, we're going to wrap this up because I'm looking at the time. I want to go back to the first comment that Vanessa made and the second comment and the comment that you made. It is real important that you get this. She, Vanessa's comment was that when he created us, it wasn't a little bit at a time, it was immediate. Your essence, the, the essence of God is in you from the time that you, well, let me, give, hallelujah. Pastor, the time that we accept Christ as savior, we get his essence or at, I would say at birth, hallelujah, we need to think about it. We, we will think about that further, but, but we are born in sin and shaping, shaping in iniquity. And so the born again uh, process, hallelujah. Right, that tends toward what you're saying. So at the time that we accept Jesus Christ as Savior, we get his essence. We are re That's why we have to be reborn, because our first birth, we are born in sin and shaping in iniquity. But at our rebirth, except in Jesus Christ, his essence comes into us, and that's why we're able to do that. And it's not a little bit at a time. It's immediate. It's immediate. Now, Jelani, you were making this point, and we gotta, gotta, we're going to wrap this up. Religion has made us rubber stamp things and say, yeah, I see myself as God. Yes, I see myself as God. Yes, I see myself as God. Stop fooling yourself. Stop waiting to, like, the, 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 the example that Jelana gave when she was using herself. She thinks she's one size. She looks in the mirror and she thinks she's still that size until she actually gets a picture and she realizes what she thought is not there. So she was fooling herself when she was looking in the mirror. Stop walking around telling yourself that you believe something that you don't. Meditate on this word. Meditate on this word. To when you look, and, she, and, and Jelana powerfully pointed out, it's a telltale that you don't believe it when we start seeing what comes out your mouth because the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay? And that's when we know that you don't see yourself like God when you open up your mouth. Because when you open up your mouth, if you saw yourself like God, your words, you, you will have certain words, you will have certain language, and you will be producing certain things. So meditate on this. So when you look in the mirror, you see God, and you're able to function like God. And it's upon that foundation that we build our purpose. I forgot what Vanessa's other point was, so I guess I need to just stop. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I was told to keep going. What was her next point? No, I was told to stop. Okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we're done. Father, we thank you right now. We thank you for this day. We thank you, Lord, for this word. We thank you, God, that it went into the good soul of our heart, didn't go by the wayside in the thorny or thorny ground. We thank you, Lord, that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish what it is set out to do in us to hear. God, we're not just hearing this, this word, but we're also doers of this word. God, we will meditate on it, and it will become a part of who we are. It will shape us. It will change us into you. In Jesus' name, amen.